And welcome to week two of Boom Bust Fantasy Football. I'm joined by Kyle and none other than the professor. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Awesome. Good Ready on, Corey. Oh, yeah. All right. So it's already week two. Week one in the books was pretty difficult just because we didn't really have anything to go off of. You know, I, I keep talking about how it's really difficult because these players don't play in the preseason. So not only do we not get to see them, but then they're working their cobwebs out actually in week one. So it's pretty difficult. Now we've seen it in week one going into week two. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think about these players. So let's go ahead and jump into some booms and busts. Uh, Professor, we'll go first with you this week. Uh, who's your first player you want to talk about? First player I'm going to talk about tonight is Mr. J. Will. Uh, and that is Javante Williams with the Denver Broncos. And let me say right up front, Corey, that when I put these together, they're only, they're only two booms and two busts. So I'm trying to pick guys where I think teams might be trying to make a decision on whether or not to start a player this week. The obvious guys, you know, we're going to try not to touch. But Javante right. Williams is one of the guys that, you know, a team owner might be thinking about starting this week based on what they were thinking about his role on their team going into the season. And this is a guy right now that I just don't think is startable. Um, he had eight carries for 23 yards in week one, um, one catch for no yards. On the top of that, he was really he was outplayed by Jaleel McLaughlin. So I'm concerned about Javante Williams. I'm also concerned about the fact that they're playing this week the Pittsburgh Steelers, who yeah. is kind of a very stingy defense against the run. So for me, Javante Williams, if you have him, I know you probably drafted him to start, but he's a guy you got to ride your ride the bench this week. Yeah, I think we were a little bit hesitant on him. Anyways, was he going to come back? uh healthy enough and we he didn't have that burst that we he used to have you know he used to be a real stud but then also playing with a rookie quarterback and then mclaughlin uh performing fairly decent i i was nervous about him going into the season and you hit the nail on the head this week against the steelers with all those question marks man no thank you on that um i'm sitting on him this week too that's a good call there professor all right kyle who do you got who's your first player my first one's going to be Aaron Jones, and it's not necessarily an obvious player. Like Tony was talking about, we're staying away from obvious ones, but it's an obvious matchup to me. Aaron Jones against San Francisco. I know Brees ran on him a little bit, but let's face it, Aaron Jones is no Brees Hall. So I think Aaron is going to struggle a whole lot against this defense this week. That defense is – going to improve as the year goes as they always do they get tougher and tougher week one was a struggle for everybody so yeah they let Brees have a few yards aaron jones i think they shut him down yeah i mean i can see where you're coming from there aaron jones did have a great week one but it wasn't the 49ers right exactly. and then when you think about um all the weapons that were on the jets and things like that i don't know that they're gonna fear sam darnold the same way they're gonna fear uh aaron Rodgers. so I could see him coming up a little bit. I, granted, they've got to respect uh, Justin Jefferson, but but they kept Garrett Wilson under control pretty good too. So I don't know. I just don't think that Minnesota offense finds much success there either. So um, yeah, not loving Aaron Jones getting into scoring position very often this week. All right, Kyle, give us one more. Who's your next one? All right, let's give you a boom this time. Mr. J.K. Dobbins. Dude, he looked incredible, and I didn't expect it. I thought Gus Bus was going to be the guy there. J.K. comes out with 10 carries for 135 yards and a touchdown. Like, where did that come from? You know, and this week they play Carolina, who is an even better matchup. Give me J.K., man, all day long this week. I or love J. Williams on your roster. I, I, <laughs> I do love this uh, matchup, and I think everyone thought Gus Bus was going to be the number one there, but I have read that they're still just going to ride the hot hand, so that makes me a little bit nervous. But with this matchup, the hot hand could be both of them, honestly. I mean, if they're switching back and forth, both of them can have uh, a big week here. Uh, I think you're right. I think this is a great matchup play here for J.K., Otherwise, I'm a little nervous moving forward uh, beyond this week, especially since they play Pittsburgh the next week. So I don't know if I'm riding him fast this week, but I like it for this week for sure. Exactly. All right, Professor, give us your next one there. 
So I'll give you a boom player as well. And for my boom side, I'm going to give you also uh, Mr. J. Will. However, this is Mr. Jameson Williams. We have a theme going today. How do I, I try, you know, I try. I'm trying. <laughs> trying to keep it interesting, Corey. Uh, Jameson Williams. Boy, this guy looks like he is uh, fully healed and in shape and ready to hit the league by storm this year. Um, looked fantastic last week. Also this week has just another tremendous matchup against a very – injury depleted Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense. So I, I like him a lot. Another thing too, that I really like about Jamison Williams, unlike other receivers that we talked about earlier, court, uh, Kyle, with our, with our bus list, you know, this guy had nine targets. So nine targets, five receptions, 121 yards and a touchdown, tremendous stat line. Love this guy this week. I think he's a rock solid wide receiver too, in all formats. I've essentially just got to eat crow on JMO, and um, <laughs> I, I I agree he looks fantastic. So uh, I'm rooting for him. I'm hoping he's uh, he he stays keeping up like that. I hope he doesn't keep taking away from Amon Ra's production. We'll see what goes on there. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna eat crow on JMO and say maybe he is legit in this league. So go for it. I want to just add real quick too, just on JMO. I know it's a it's it's a boom for this week, but uh, the the Detroit Lions play I think sixteen of their seventeen games in a dome this year. Oh, so that, that says something. Be, that says something. a boom on the season. Oh man, yeah, Goff performs in a dome. All right, <laughs> Professor, who's your next player? Go ahead and keep rolling there. Yeah, I'm gonna give you. I'll give you another boom guy. And I was funny. I was talking with Kyle off air, and I was asking him. Just an interesting question. If you could re-rank the tight ends after week one, week one, how would you do it? Not just the tight ends, but also how they fit into the overall ADP, just based on what we saw oh my in gosh. week one. Crazy, right? Nice. And so on that note, I'm going to go with a guy that I really kind of didn't fully appreciate coming into the season. And being a Raiders fan, I really should have. And that's Mr. Brock Bowers. You know, this guy looked to be – a major part of this offense right from week one. I really didn't expect that to happen. I thought last week was going to be more of a, of a run heavy game script. I thought we might see a lot more of uh, Devonte Adams, but you know, this guy dominated the target share, almost 30% of the target share in this offense, um, eight targets. He had six catches for 58 yards. I just kind of love already how he's fit into this offense. We know that he's a, is a generational talent. And so I love him this week. I love him in the matchup. I know he's up against Baltimore, but look for uh, Gardner Minshew to look his way for some nice, easy dump offs across the middle. You know, I expect him to be a big part of the offensive game plan this week. Yeah, I think we all knew Brock Bowers was great talent, right? And so we had big hopes for him. But then going to the Raiders, we didn't know what kind of volume and how much work he was actually going to get. It wasn't an that excited about his landing spot and so his his adp kind of tanked because of it i feel like um but then coming right out of the gate coming off of an injury too didn't know how he was going to be used but then eight targets oh i'll take that all day you know so so he's getting great uh volume there and and did well with those targets so it's only going to prove that's his first nfl game holy cow yeah, yeah sign me up for that i'm with you on that and I mean, not for nothing, but I was saying all offseason he was going to be a top five tight end this year. I mean, who wasn't? You know, <laughs> just, just saying. Rookie all right, now, keep chiming in there. Who's your next player? Uh, I'm going to give you my other bust guy. It's going to be DK Metcalf against New at, at New England. Um, New England essentially shut down the Bengals' passing offense this last week. Burrow looked bad. Jamar Chase had six whole catches for 62 yards. Like, nothing much going there. This offense is not the Bengals. They clearly want to run the football. I just don't see DK putting up hardly any kind of numbers this week. It's going to be tough sledding. I mean, not much else I can say on that. I'm not a huge DK believer uh, with Geno Smith passing the ball, and they want to run the rock, and they've got multiple running backs that are totally worthy of running the rock. So I think that's where their bread and butter is going to be at this year. 
And uh, I'm not loving DK Metcalf either. All right, you got one more for me, Kyle? Yeah, man, my last boom, Mr. Amari Cooper. They had a tough time against the Cowboys this last week. Deshaun Watson was on his ass most of the game, thanks to Michael Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence. But um, be a little bit easier bit of a go here against Jacksonville this week, I think. Um, I, I think they're going to make a concerted effort to really get that passing game going against Jacksonville just because they did struggle so much last week. They really need to get Deshaun the, the $240 million man going. Like, they got to – they really got to get him up and going. So, yeah, I, I think they'll have a much easier time this week, and Cooper will be the beneficiary. As, as a Cooper owner, I am hoping you are right here because I desperately, desperately need something from Deshaun Watson on this. And um, if not, it's time to put Jamison Winston in. You know, he, he's a he'll get out there and sling the ball. I don't care. So, uh, Sean Watson has has not been doing very well. So hopefully, at some point, he's bound to emerge. Right? Unfortunately, they're paying him so much. He's got such a long leash. Yeah. Who knows how long they yeah. let him go? But we shall we shall see. Um, they'll be playing down in the beautiful Jacksonville. Love that. All right, Tony, I think you got one more for me. Give me that professor knowledge. Well, I figured I would stay with the tight ends, and I've uh, been talking earlier about Isaiah Likely. We talked about Mark Andrews. Unfortunately, although I think Andrews will be fine on the season, I am not ready to put him into my starting lineup this week. The Las Vegas Raiders are surprisingly difficult matchup for opposing tight ends, and I and – I, I, uh, I, I, think we're going to see almost a repeat of what we saw in week one. And that was a heavy dose of Zay Flowers and a heavy dose of Isaiah Likely, who the Ravens really are using more as a receiver mm -hmm. as opposed to a tight end. But between the two of them, between Flowers and Likely, 22 targets, I think we might see something similar to that again this week uh, against this, uh, this Raider defense. We also might see – a little bit more of uh, Lamar Jackson, I think, taking the ball a little bit downfield. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, I agree with you. I think likely uh, is definitely being used more as a wide receiver type, but um, that I'm, I'm a little worried that the, the Kansas City defense gave a pretty good blueprint on how to shut down Mark Andrews. Granted, not every team's going to be able to pull that off. Uh, and they gave up a lot to likely, so they sacrificed – uh by doing that so maybe it's not an exact blueprint on how to shut down that offense but um but it makes me a little bit nervous for andrews especially still he still hasn't had that much time with the team because of those injuries and he's still probably getting worked back in a little bit slowly and so uh i'm with you on this i i don't love andrews this week which is unfortunate because i have him on multiple teams with not great other options so little little sad on that one. Actually, big sad. But anyways, all right, guys, y'all got anything else to add? Good luck. Week two. It's tough out there, guys. Good luck to you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Appreciate you. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, guys. We are here. We are here. FantasySportsAdvice.com, offering the best fantasy sports social media platform. Why join endless Discord communities or the trolls of Reddit? <laughs> Fantasy Sports Advice is a community designed to help you win with 24-7 support. Go to FantasySportsAdvice.com and become a pro member for unlimited access. Again, go to FantasySportsAdvice.com today.